all right welcome back to the channel guys in today's lesson we are going to be having a look at v-ray nmesh if you're not aware of what v-ray nmesh is it is essentially a modifier that you can apply to any uh, surface or any geometry and that will enable you to wrap it with a mesh so instead of applying a material with a bump or a displacement this will allow you to essentially apply geometry and wrap your objects with geometry uh, we have some new patterns in the chaos cosmos browser that we're going to be checking out so if we just go there and we come down to nmesh patterns if you click on that we have a new library of all of these new cool patterns that we can use so just to start off with i think we're just going to choose one and i think this one is pretty cool so i've already downloaded this one i'm just going to press t to jump into the top view and we're going to drag and drop it into our viewport and there it is okay so over here is our pattern and this is the geometry that we are going to be repeating on our sample ball over there so the first thing that we need to do is we need to click on our ball go to the drop down menu in our modifiers list and we're going to drop down to v-ray and mesh modifier going to apply that and we are going to find our pattern so we're going to just click on the add button and select the nmesh pattern jump into our camera and we can have a look what that gives us inside of our ipr all right so this is giving us this kind of result and for the moment it's not looking too good but if we go through a few settings and we do a few modifications i'm sure we can get something that looks a lot better so if we just in a nutshell go through the settings for those people that are not sure what they will do over here we have the part where you basically add your patterns and you can remove them and the next one is the a crop box size so if we just minimize this and we go to top view and we are going to find our little mesh over here and we select that and uh, we need to just deselect this and go back to here so for the moment we have a 30 millimeter by millimeter box so uh, this essentially just controls which part of the mesh is going to be tiled essentially so if you bring this down and this down it's only going to use the part that's on the inside so it's not going to take into account the outside part of this mesh okay so we can bring that back to 30 by 30 because we want to use the entirety of this mesh and i don't know why it didn't update there a bit weird there we go it's updated okay so you can also make sure that the z-axis is the same so z-axis is just the vertical vertical part of the mesh okay and then the next settings that we're going to go is fit in object scene so for example if your mesh is bigger than your second mesh that you're going to be applying it to sometimes when you apply it it's just going to render invisible and that's because it's too big for the object that you've applied it to so in that case you'd go and you'd say fit in object space so it's going to just um, reduce the size and make it fit on top of your geometry and then the height 100% is good. height offset is also okay this you can leave alone and then uh, tiling and offset and that kind of stuff is essentially just a box that is very similar to what we did before we're just going to draw a rectangle over here so for example if this is what we want to 
apply the offset is basically if you offset it on the x you can just offset it to that part and it's going to use that if you're offsetting it on the y you're moving it up and the z axis is obviously up and down so that's just the offsets so if we just go back to our camera go and start our ID is already started over here so okay so we're gonna start that and we're gonna try to make this look a little bit better so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to increase the height because we can see that this is looking pretty flat so I'm just gonna go straight up to like 500 and now we're getting a little bit more volume inside of this thing but I think that this needs to go a lot more yeah so that's starting to look really cool and you can see over here that basically our crop box is creating these joints inside of this that's a good example of what I was explaining earlier so if it's not exactly correct the tiling is not going to be correct as well so if we drop that to 30 now everything is going to be connected and it's starting to look pretty awesome so you can imagine this on a whole host of different things you could use it for a small material if you reduce the tiling for example uh, if we increase the tiling this should be smaller so go 10 by 10 and now I think we just need to reduce the height a little bit let's go to say 2000 in this case and you could imagine that this you could use for um, some sort of a metal mesh or you could just apply a different material to it and you could use it as a woven basket or something of that sort there's there's so many things you can use this for and it's such a useful tool and uh, I think we all everyone that's been working in the 3d industry for the past 10-15 years knows how uh, grateful we are for something like this because in the past to create something like this was a real mission uh, yeah so we are really grateful for that so we're going to just try like one or two different ones and see what other effects we can get okay so we're just going to pop into the top view once again and download say for example this one which looks pretty cool looks like a kind of leather from a Chesterfield sofa we're just going to drop that in there and let's go for one more that maybe has some sort of a transparency to it yeah so let's just try this one for example and we're going to drop that into our scene as well so all you need to do now to change it is you just need to remove this one and add the next one okay so all the settings stay the same and we can have a look at what that gives us in this so now you can see that we're not getting a a result so it's probably because the size is too big so we're going to try and fit in object space and now it's starting to work so that uh, just gives you an example of uh, what I was explaining earlier when the pattern is too big for the object so uh, over here we can see that also the height is too high for this so we're going to try something around 500 and that is looking pretty awesome yeah I really like that so um, you don't have to use uh, these presets they are really cool but you can also create your own ones so essentially anything that repeats itself you can use uh, also so uh, yeah that's looking pretty good and let's check just the last one that has some transparency on it okay and we are going to select our sphere remove this one and add our final pattern which will be this one okay and click c to jump back into the camera and we're going to have a look at this one which is not working very well and we're going to just click on fit in object space space once again and you can see that it's working again 
And even if you apply, say, for example, a different modifier on top of this, let's say um, something like a bend modifier, for example, it's still going to work like say that for example so you can apply different modifiers below that and it's still going to work correctly which is pretty awesome okay and then you can just change the direction or whatever you like so um yeah i think that this uh, modifier is really awesome and it can be a, a real lifesaver in certain projects where you get uh, certain facades that are um really uh, detailed but are repetitive so you could use this instead of actually modeling everything uh, by hand or one by one so yeah that's it for today guys hope that you enjoyed the lesson and i'll see you in the next one